It's no secret that crankbaits rule Lake Erie when it comes to catching trophy walleye. Some of the biggest walleye taken every year are caught on these lures during a brief period of time known as the pre-spawn. In this week's episode, Mark and Jake set their sights on helping anglers zero in on crankbaits that are best suited to fishing the misunderstood pre-spawn walleye bite. there tight string you gotta love that in the morning whoa baby you give me a chance to even get the bait clicker off before he decides to start running well if you look around you'll kind of tell that we're in uh, familiar waters Lake Erie and uh, boy we spend a lot of time down here and if you haven't had an opportunity to get to Lake Erie recently, you really do need to make time. It is unbelievably good fishing. Lots and lots of walleyes to be had here in Lake Erie. And uh, I got a second one on already over here. I haven't even got this fish in the boat yet and my other line is fired already. So I got two pegged. Tell you what I gotta do, Dad. I got baits everywhere. <laughs> we haven't had a chance to get our lines in the water here. He's gonna be here in a hurry. You might wanna run to get the net because this is a very short lead. There we go. <laughs> I'll go very slow here until we're ready with that net. There we go. Oh, a nice fish too, Dad. That is a good looking fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Gorgeous. Oh. Oh, closer. Oh, nice. jakers. I love those. Welcome to Lake Erie. <laughs> Man, what a toad. Whoa. That's a good start. My goodness. Look at that dorsal fin. Man, you got to love Lake Erie walleyes, particularly in the spring. Well, this fish has got a lucky day. He gets to go back and swim again. Let's see if this one's still here. It's taken a while to get to this point. I think we're lucky. I think we're still hooked up, Jakers. Still on there? Yeah, I believe nice. so. We've been dragging this fish for a while while we landed the first one, but uh, I believe uh, I believe he hung on. This one doesn't feel as uh, is a tankish. As big there. No, it definitely isn't. And uh, try and catch up to him here. He's just a little guy. That's why he didn't feel too big. Oh, nice so fish. He's, he's not too big. I wouldn't call him little. That's still well, a good fish. Wow. Compared to the one we just boiled, he's <laughs> not too good. So, wow, that's not a bad way to start the morning. Bang, bang. Look at that. 
You know, one of the more important things with trolling is speed, especially in the springtime. You really want to make sure your speeds are dialed in. And kind of the rule of thumb is you want to go slow in the spring when the water's cold. Um, but what does that mean? I can't really set a date and tell you exactly when that is because in this situation, this particular spring, it's been pretty warm early in the year. And what that means is the water is warmer than normal. In fact, if you look on the graph right now, we have 51.5 degree water temperature, which for this early in the year is unheard of, uh, which means we can go a little bit faster. Now we're still trolling slow in the big scheme of things, uh, but to say that, you know, to come out in the middle of April you need to troll this speed, it's just not possible to tell you that because every year is different. The one thing you want to do is trust your electronics, watch that water temperature, and as that water temperature rises, you can go a little bit faster, cover more water, and catch more fish. Uh, what I just did is I released the board, and now it's going to swing right to the back of the boat. I don't have to clear any lines, but in this situation, it's been pretty crazy fishing this morning. I only have one other line out there right now. Now we're fishing Ohio waters of Lake Erie, and one of the nice things about Ohio in recent years is they've actually brought it to three lines per person. Nice fish. Let's go oh, that fish down. Beautiful, beautiful, nice fish. beautiful. We'll pull this fish up and show them off. That is a beautiful Lake Erie walleye. This is the time to be here if you're looking for quality fish on the Lake Erie system. It is the month of April, and what you have are pre-spawn and post-spawn walleyes. Most of these fish out here right now are reef spawning fish, um, and of course this is a spawned out female. And this year it seems like these fish are spawning a little bit earlier. We actually had a full moon in March, so this is a spawned out, been spawned out for quite some time female there. Um, beautiful, beautiful walleye. We're going to get her back and catch some more. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. There he goes. <laughs> I got one on the inside board here, Jakers. He just pegged it. Oh man, we're having a nice morning, there's no question about it. You know, there's a migration of fish that takes place every year in Lake Erie. Uh, they come to the western basin where we're at now, and that's where they're spawning, because this is where the best spawning substrate is at. Lots of reefs, lots of rocky bottoms in this area where they can spawn. I can actually see the Michigan shoreline in the distance. It's not very far away, but we're actually in Ohio waters. So most of these fish are going to spawn here in either Michigan or Ohio waters, and eventually they're going to start making their way east, and they'll go through the central basin, and some of these fish will actually even end up in the eastern basin. But there's a lot of good fishing to be had uh, before they leave. They all come in the spring and we get April and May and June high quality fishing during that time period. I can see this guy already. He's not a giant but he is definitely a Lake Erie walleye. Look at that oh, that's a good fish. Right that is a good fish. It's a good fish. He's just not. I'm going to pull him to my side Jake I think because they seem like that's the direction he wants to come. Nice. Yeah, just thick. I got some I mean, shoulders not, on them. There's so many fish in the system right now that are just in this general size range. It's amazing. We'll get this guy out of here and show him off. Just a chunk. Literally, just a healthy, healthy Lake Erie walleye. Not the biggest fish we'll catch today, certainly not the smallest. But another great fish. Oh my God, this inside board's going here, Dad. Yeah, pull tight on him. We're going really slow, which is the name of the game in the springtime, is you want to troll slow. Um, in fact, this is what I do, it's kind of my rule of thumb of trolling, is that if I'm catching fish and the bite slows down, I slow down with them, um, and I start slow. And I like to cover water, The kind of the rule of thumb is go as fast as you can and still catch fish, but I almost take that out of the picture in the springtime. I start slow, and if I'm not catching fish, then you can play with speed. Um, but right now we're going anywhere from that 1-2 to 1-4. And so, um, and, it's, and it's working right now, so you don't fix what isn't broken. You're no kidding, it ain't broken today. Oh, nice fish too. Not a giant, but a good solid Lake Erie walleye. Actually, you know, he wants to be he on the side. To, yeah, sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. We'll get him the side he wants right here. Nice walleye. Nice, easy scoop. So I'm gonna quick pull this fish out of the net. Now that's just a, 
little eater size walleye. If we're keeping something to eat today, it'd be perfect. Um, but he popped right off in the net, and that's pretty indicative when you troll slow. Like I said, we're going anywhere from one, two, to 1.4 miles an hour. Um, and so what I do, and I'll pull this bait out and I'll show you the bait, but I, a lot of times I'll upgrade the treble hooks to choke car hooks just because they're a lot sharper. And it makes a big difference. But literally the second dad scooped that fish, he came off in the net. So you give them an inch of slack and they'll come off. You see, this is the bait that I just caught that fish on right here. And this is a, a husky jerk from Rapala. You see, this is a stock hook, and then these are upgraded hooks. These, these are Trocar um, treble hooks. This is a 310 series in the Trocar right here. And a lot of times, I'll just upgrade my back treble hooks, whether it's the very far back one or maybe the middle one. And the reason for that is the majority of your fish are going to come on those back hooks. And if a fish bites it hard enough that he's getting that front treble hook, he's not coming off anyways. And so, especially when you're trolling slow like we are today, uh, they're stretching this monofilament, you're trolling slow, there's a lot of slack in the line, so it's really important to have some really nice sharp hooks uh, to keep those fish stuck. Well, let's take a second and talk a little bit about the baits that we're going to use. Normally on Lake Erie, when we're crankbait fishing, we're going to use a variety of baits. And any given day, we're going to have two or three different kinds of baits in the water. Let the fish kind of decide what they're going to hit on, what they're going to prefer. But through pre-fishing here and through some good information from some local anglers that have been helping us, we've come to the conclusion that right now it's the husky jerk, the deep husky jerk that's fishing the best. So our entire pattern is all, all six lines are going to be husky jerks. Rarely would we do that, but occasionally you will come onto a situation where one bait is out producing others and that's the logical one you're going to want to go from and it doesn't surprise us that the husky jerk is firing here the water's cool it's got a very subtle action but don't just fall into the trap of thinking one bait's going to get it done for you you do need a selection of lures and when you figure out what that selection is that seems to be most productive you're going to quickly gravitate to the bait that's getting bit special considerations are provided by precision trolling data and the lake st clair walleye association Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. If you've watched Fishing 411 before, you've seen us traveling all over the Midwest with smooth move seats under our butts. They've done a great job of saving our backs when the weather gets rough and the conditions just get tough. The smooth move seats are great, and there's a couple different options out there. You have the Ultra, and then you have the Air. And in this case, I have an Ultra sitting right next to me, which is a spring style seat. And there's a couple things that you have to do to your Ultra throughout the season to make sure that it's working at peak performance. It's a very simple type thing. Basically, all you're gonna do is is slide the seat back and when you slide that seat back you're going to see a big round hole in the center and what I like to do is take some WD-40 with a hose style and stick it in that hole and just squirt a little bit of WD-40 in there. Then I take the seat and I slide it back forward again and you'll see three big holes and the same thing you take that WD-40 and you squirt a little bit in all three holes. Now the other thing you want to keep in mind is if your boat's sitting for a long period of time, the other thing I really like to do is actually take the spring tensioner that's right in the center and back the tension off of those springs. The Smooth Moves Ultra is a great seat. It's really saved our backs when the conditions just simply get tough. Doing these simple things to your Ultra will ensure that it works for years to come. You know, at Fishing 401, we get a lot of questions. I mean, a lot of questions. And one of the most common questions we get is on this loop trick. People want to know, does the loop trick create slack in the line and does it cause you to lose fish? And actually, the opposite happens. Now, the old school planer board rigging methods where people would release the board and then on the back of the board, they had like a, a pigtail and they allowed the board to slide all the way down to the fish. That did create slack in the line and that did create an opportunity where fish could get off. But the loop trick doesn't do that. Once it releases here, it still pins at the exact location on the line. So when you release the board by popping the rod tip, you're actually coming tight on the fish at the same instant you're releasing the board. So you're creating no slack whatsoever and you're allowing yourself the flexibility of being able to stack multiple lines, not having to clear lines in order to fight fish. The loop trick doesn't create slack, doesn't cause you to lose fish, actually causes you to put more fish in the boat. Oh, it's got some shoulders on it, holy cow. This was a high line, it was only about 30 back. He's got the board off and it's, just look at that, absolutely straight down. That's a good thing oh, here. Just take your time with him, we'll get him. Whew. Oh man, just dogging. You know they're a big fish when they just stay straight down like that. And then it's almost like a vertical tug of war as you're just trying to bring them up real slow. 
This fish is only seven feet back. You still can't see him. There he is. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful walleye, Dad. Oh, man. Go closer. Scoop that fish, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> look at the nice size fish. of that fish. Woo! That. That is a beautiful Lake Erie walleye, and that is definitely a spawned out girl there. Look at the size of that fish right there. Wow. I mean, that is the definition of what you come to Lake Erie in the springtime for, a spawned out uh, female walleye. And that thing is, that's gotta be 27, 28 inches long and just skinny as can be. This fish didn't spawn that long ago. You can see how beat up she is. And that's the cool thing. You know, we talked today multiple times about pre-spawn, post-spawn, fish that have spawned before, um, you could definitely tell a fish that has just got done going through the spawning because this one fits the bill right here. You see how red the fins are, how beat up she is. Um, this fish right here, once she got done spawning, that's what they do. They put the feed bag on and that's why you come to Lake Erie, draw crankbaits out here and get a chance to tie into a fish like this. Have you ever wondered how deep your crankbaits are fishing below the surface? A lot of people have because basically manufacturers don't test their lures. They really don't have any specific information as far as for how deep a crankbait is going to run on various different lead lengths and various different line diameters. But thankfully there is technology out there to help you. It's a phone app. It's called the Precision Trolling Data App. And it's available for both Android and it's also available for iPhone users. And what it does is it tests different crankbaits at different lead lengths and different line diameters to determine exactly how deep it goes below the surface. And the way they do this is by actually dragging or trolling these lures past a scuba diver in the water where he documents the exact depth. So you take the app and you can determine exactly how deep you want to bait the fish. For example, today we've been fishing the husky jerks and, uh, and if you want to look at what 30 back, how deep that is, the app will tell you exactly how deep that is. If you need that bait to go a little deeper, um, all you have to do is add a little bit more line out to achieve the depth that you're looking for. So the app saves a lot of time, no guesswork associated. If you're seeing fish on the graph at a certain depth and you want to get your lures to that depth, the Precision Trolling Data app will do it for you. Day in and day out, it puts more fish in the boat. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Diola Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Well, that one pegged the tattle flagger right on down. We like to see that when that happens. So obviously bigger fish are going to pull the board down or pull the flag down more abruptly and, and hold it down. Small fish, sometimes what you'll see is the flag go down and then you'll see it kind of pop back up and then go back down again. Um, but one of the nice things about the tail flags, they are adjustable. So you can pretty much set the tension for anything you want. And right now we've kind of got it in the middle of the road uh, tension setting right now. So you can customize that tension setting for, uh, for light gear like spinners or for maybe deep diving crankbaits or maybe even adding snap weights in crankbaits, uh, which has a lot of resistance of course. So the tattle flag is universal to pretty much any way, uh, any kind of gear that you want to fish with it. It's a solid fish, man. I love it. Well, the crazy thing was, is that was a, you know, we're making a turn and that was the outside board on the inside. So, I mean, that board was literally barely moving. Yep. Going much slower than, than we have been. Well, it's pretty light That's on a right nice there, fish, too. Good looking fish, good looking light. Good looking that job. Nice Thank you, son. fish. <laughs> Can't wipe the smile off my face. It just feels that good. It definitely feels that good. You know, I always love integrating technology to, to types of fishing that we're doing. And in this situation, we have a brand new electric motor that we're fishing today, and it's called the Ghost Electric Motor from Lowrance. The cool thing about this motor is it's an autopilot style electric motor, and it's networked to our units, networked to our Lowrance units. So in this situation, I've actually just made a turn here, and I'm going to start going back towards the direction I was fishing. Now, right now, it's on course lock. And what course lock is, is just keeping me on a straight compass heading. Now, I can turn the compass, and I can turn the direction I want to go but in this situation we just caught a pile of fish back to where we were so I want to really follow that same course back to uh, where we just were. The nice thing about that is on the Lowrance unit I can actually touch on the Lowrance unit I can put go to cursor and it's going to ask me if I want to 
engage autopilot mode. And of course, yes, I do. And the nice thing now is I can actually go to prop here because I like to use the battery percentage. And I can go up to, um, we've been doing about 30, 35%. You can feel the boat turning right now, and it's gonna take me right back down the same course that I was just on. The nice thing about that is I'm covering the same water that I was covering before. Only difference is I don't have to worry about controlling the boat along the way. I can catch fish, have fun, and that's what it's all about. You know, one of the things we talk about with releasing boards, one of the things I really like about releasing them is I can very easily unhook that board by myself. See, so all I really do is just keep that nice tight line, and I can come up here like this, keep tight on that fish, and my dad's literally right now pulling a fish out of the net and doing that. And I can easily unhook that board and just keep the fun happening. I'm going to take him over on this side, Dad, if that'll that's okay. Work. No, that'll work. Nice fish. Oh, yeah, yours is a little bit bigger than mine. There we go. Nice. Scoopy, scoopy. Hey, my name is Jake Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing Fall in One. If you get a chance, get out here. Catch a pile of these Lake Erie walleyes and you'll really have a great time. We'll see you here same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cool. Huh? Literally right behind my shoulder, I got one on my board still. We got fish flopping all over the place, and that is what Lake Erie is all about. You got to get out here and experience.